Hello, I'm Simulator Deck, and welcome to another episode of Train Simulator. Here we are, deep in the New Zealand countryside. We're in Craigieburn. We're on our way on the very first New Zealand route on Train Simulator. On the previous episode, we went from Springfield to Craigieburn, and now we're continuing our journey. We've got about an hour to go in travel time. Uh, before we go on the route so if you haven't seen the previous episode you can and you can watch the first part of the route this is the second half of the route the route is modeled in 1968 so the end of the steam era there's a lot of, still a lot of steam era things around although diesel is starting to take over we haven't got to the electric section of the line yet we'll do that on this episode we are using a New Zealand rail car from Auckland, which is not part of which is not part of the route. It's a uh, separate purchase via Just Trains, and the rail cars they were constructed and built in Australia, used in Perth, and then sent over to Auckland and so you know they were a thing in New Zealand slightly out of slightly out of context but not by too much you can imagine a tour using this sort of rail motor this rail car going out to going out to this line uh, from the next episode we'll be using this route with the scenarios and the rolling stock that is included in the Midland New Zealand Midland line but this train is a separate purchase anywho let's have a quick look around so this is our diesel rail car which again isn't included as part of the pack but I am using it because it is a uh, New Zealand train this is available via in-game on train simulator $56 Australian and whatever your equivalent is for a new route pack so let's get into the cab let's get going and let's go brakes off This is our cabin. So we're heading to Ackermans in 35 miles time just over an hour of travel time if I basically stick to, stick to track speed which I will try to do it's just after 10 a.m. Uh, 45 mile an hour track speed at the moment single line I did mention in the previous episode that I thought the I thought it might have used um, metric and kilometres and kilometres per hour uh, because it is in New Zealand and then I had a look back and I thought well no this isn't mod modelled on modern day New Zealand the train is but the scenery isn't the route isn't and so back in 1968 we would have been using the imperial measurements I wasn't born in 1968 but we would have been using the imperial system miles and miles per hour at that point so we've just left Craigieburn lots of little bridges viaducts and tunnels on this route so from next week we'll start doing the scenarios I haven't 
done any of the scenarios. We've only briefly seen a train of the period at one of the crossing loops a little bit earlier in the previous episode. The train itself is capable of about 90 kilometres an hour. That's the um, that's the maximum speed that it would have been designed for in in regular service. And I thought that I would start with this train uh, because I have featured it on a, a couple of previous episodes. And I thought we'll just have a look at the uh, we'll just have a look at the line first, and then from next week we'll get into the different scenarios. So we're coming up to a signal which will basically reassure us that we do have the signal and that the next signal, which would probably be at the end of the single line section, shouldn't be at stop. So we'll open the throttle a bit, it's just passing 70 kilometres an hour. We'll just shut off here, and we'll just roll. The first New Zealand route ever to be featured on Train Simulator. Uh, I have did mention in the previous episode that you know I'm quite happy to pay my fifty-six dollars to uh, support the developers and and show the train simulator people of tail games that there is a market for Australian New Zealand content and basically consider I believe there's about four years of work to get to this point to uh, be able to release Having it set in a um, in a previous time, in this case 1968, might have made the job a little bit easier. Um, while there would have been some assets that they that the development team could have used, um, because it's really the really the first Kiwi route, there's not as many resources for to build something compared to if it was a UK route or a European route or an American route for instance so if you are new to Simulated Irk welcome there's a whole heap of episodes back on the Simulated Irk YouTube page on the Train Simulator playlist we've been to a lot of places using a lot of different rolling stock from around the world some of it from places that train simulator officially hasn't been that's been created by independent creators such as this New Zealand route um, can you imagine if train simulator officially got into India for instance and created an Indian route 
there, there are Indian routes out there. I have featured some of them on um, on Train Simulator episodes before, and I would and I would say that you know this route and those routes are fairly similar in terms of there's basically no official support, no Indian or no New Zealand toolkit that you can just grab and say, okay, here are my here are my assets, let's go. A lot of things that you would have had to create to create this route, the Indian route, the um, the Netherlands, some of the Netherlands routes that I've seen and that I've featured. You know, there would have been a lot of work to get into this point. And you can imagine with you know another five years of development and how you know it's how things develop also remembering that the um, base train simulator content that this runs on isn't that new anymore it's sort of like comparing the difference between Train Sim World, which you can also see on Simulator Oak on a separate playlist, Train Sim World and Train Simulator, even though it's basically done by the same company, the base is done by the same company. Just the difference in what they are, the, the difference in the underlying engine. Um, both of them are very different in the way that they're presented and played and there's a place for both so we've got a uh, speed reduction uh, coming up soon so I'm not in any hurry to power I'm just coasting at the moment Just trying to anticipate the changes in the speeds coming up. Thirty seven miles an hour. The map on the HUD. There we go. So there must be like a pre-warning for the um, must be like a pre-warning sign for the speed zone change and then the actual speed zone change. So that does match up. Single line section. The last loop was at Craigie Burn, which is where we started this episode. We've still got basically an hour of travel time uh, remaining. Dropped again into a 35, 37 mile an hour zone. So we've got, we're getting our speed down now. So I thought this is a good way just to introduce the route and then we'll just do the scenarios next time and because we're on a because we're on a single line section because we're on a single line section we won't necessarily see um, any trains until we get to the until we get to the loop the loops between the single line sections and that's basically the idea of a um, we have a 
haven't gone into the 45 section yet. So we seem to be alternating between 45 and 37 mile an hour zones uh, at the moment. Too much braking. One of the reasons why I like trains, there's no there's no doubt about that. But the main reason that I'm into things like train simulator is because I can't go to New Zealand and drive a train. I can't go to England and drive a train. I can't go to America, China, Japan, India, uh, Canada, all these sort of places. I can't go. Like, yeah, I can go and ride as a passenger, and there's been many times where I have gone overseas, ridden the trains like a local, uh, that sort of thing. But in terms of actually driving a train in those places, that won't be happening anytime soon. So we're coming up to we're coming up to a loop. So we will start to slow things down. Now, of course, I have absolutely zero road knowledge of where I'm going because this is the first time that I've driven the route. So uh, I need to heavily rely on the uh, heads up display at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I'll just let the brakes off now and just relax. I've got no reason to believe that the next signal um, should be at stop based on the previous signals that I have but we will just roll through until we get a little bit closer and then we can confirm that and if need be we can speed up and if not we're closer to being stopped than we were before now you can act i can actually see um the next signal around the corner and sometimes that's an advantage So we'll just roll. We'll just roll through the loop at this sort of speed at the moment. Um, even though the track's curvy and that sort of thing, you can actually see with your eye a straight line over to the signal. So you, I could see well in advance that it was clear. If it was stop, uh, if it was at stop, I could see well in advance that it was at stop. So. And I, and I use that sort of thing every day when I sort of look across and go, oh, okay, you know, I can just look in a straight line. There's the signal, sweet. I've got it, I can continue, or I haven't got it, so I have to slow down. So we're coming through CAS now. Simple station as they would have been at the time, 1968. Uh, we've got the next signal to get into the to get into the next section. Now, on a modern day railway, they've probably got more signals at you know either end of the loop. So, 45 miles an hour, so we can increase our speed. 
28 miles to go before our destination. Oops. Our speed is starting to get up, so we do need to apply some brakes. We are starting to go downhill. Brakes off now. We are using automatic brakes in this diesel rail motor, uh, diesel rail car. So we're just rolling at the moment, but we are going downhill, so we are gradually building up speed. I'm about to cross over bridge 40. I'm not sure what the difference is between bridge 40 and bridge 40 CA that's being shown as a head, but I guess we'll find out. So in a couple of bridges time we're about to cross the Cass River so what we'll do we'll go out of the cab for a moment. Uh, we should have slowed down before that change in speed zone. So we'll go out of the cab. Now I'm trying to adjust the camera on the fly. Because I want to see, I want to watch the train go over the Cass River Bridge. How much room I have to work with, I don't know at this stage. That's the first time that I've uh, gone along the line. It's looking quite dark out there. Did I set the scenario for um, winter or something, did I? apply a little bit of power here there we go we just went over the Cass River and we're coming up to the Mount White Holt. Still got green lights though. The main thing that I'm concerned about and that I can see is we've got a top green light, so that's good enough for me.
Not sure what this bridge is next to us. It's a, a road bridge, I guess. Just passing Mount White. So with the speed constantly changing between about 37 and 45, um, maybe we should be aiming at about 30, 35 miles an hour and just keep it at that consistent sort of, that consistent sort of rate at the moment. We've still got 25 miles to go uh, before we go to our, before we get to our destination. Still about 50 minutes of travel time remaining.
So we're about to cross over a river, the Warakari River. So looking forward to uh, seeing that. So back in the cab now. So we've got a ballast siding alongside us now on the right hand side. Still got about 24 miles to go before we arrive at our destination. Now I should also point out that this train isn't, wasn't designed uh, with this route in mind so there may be some issues in relation to um, how this train looks on this route that might not happen on say next week's episode when we get a piece of rolling stock, a train uh, that's designed for and optimised for this route.
but we, we should get back in the cab because we do have a loop coming up, Coraline. So we'll back off the throttle. And we'll have a look. Looks like we've got a green light ahead. Oops, we should. I just want to slow down a little bit so I can have a look at this, have a look at the area as we pass by. So this is Coraline. So it'll be interesting to see from next week when we start doing the scenarios uh, to see if there's actually trains in some of these loops. Uh, this is on quick drive at the moment so there's no scenario involved um, at this time. I haven't looked at the scenarios. There's 10 scenarios included with the route but I haven't looked at any of the scenarios yet and I won't do until just before I record. So we have passed through Coraline. We've got the uh, signal out of the loop. We can get back up to 45 miles an hour, so let's go. Full throttle, three notches of power on this uh, diesel multiple unit, which is not part of the um, not part of the pack. But I'm quite enjoying using this train on this route even though it's not historically accurate um, I am still enjoying it though you know it is a New Zealand train on a New Zealand route even though the train dates from uh, 1993 and in its current form from the early 2000s and the route is from modelled on 1968 21 and a half miles to go about 45 minutes of travel time remaining
So we've just reduced the throttle. We have a uh, speed reduction coming up. So just by reducing the uh, throttle setting from two thirds to one third, or from two notch to one notch if you like, um, we're sweet. Didn't have to use the brake. Just about to cross the Bailey River. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So we'll just reduce it down a bit. We we're getting a bit hot there. Some of the speed zones are quite short. So as I was mentioning before, sometimes you just got to average it out a bit. The speed limits are limits, they're not targets necessarily. So about 15 and a half miles to go now, we've still got about half an hour of travel time uh, remaining before we complete the route.
so soon we are coming up to Arthur's Pass and I can remember reading the description uh, in the previous episode that um, Arthur's Pass is significant it's um, 10.40 in the morning but it is very very dark um, I'm wondering if I set the scenario to winter I know I did set it to sunny uh, this is a quick drive um, this is quick drive not necessarily um, not necessarily scenario we'll start getting into the uh, scenarios next episode can see a red light up ahead. Wasn't paying attention. Am going to pass that signal. Oh dear. Nothing happened. I don't fully understand the New Ze Zealand signalling system, so that could have something to do with it. So this is Arthur's Pass. Looks like we've got the signal ahead. Oh, this is the most significant platform we've been at so far, so we will stop and get a photo. Alright, let's go outside for a minute. Quite dark, isn't it? Oops, hang on, we need to go down and around. I'm trying to adjust the camera on the fly. Arthur's Pass, height above sea level, 2000. 417 feet. Whoops, didn't mean to zoom in that hard. Um, It is quite dark. Glad I got those headlights on. Oh, those. So this must be the start of the electric section. There we go. You would think that it is really late in the afternoon. It's quarter to 11 in the morning. Let's get back in the cab. So I dare say we'll be seeing more of 
Arthur's Pass in different scenarios. Apart from Springfield, it's the um, biggest station so far that we've seen. So we're now in electric territory. And reading from the description in the previous episode that the electrification was quite early in the piece in the uh, 1920s. So we're about to go through a big long tunnel. Should try and have a look outside. Okay, so we're in a tunnel now. just shut off because we are going to go downhill so our speed will pick up on its own whoops that was actually I need to put some brake on a 1 in 33 grade which from memory is about the equivalent of going down some parts of the Blue Mountains line here in or in Sydney can't say here in Sydney anymore because I'm not in Sydney. So we'll just release our brakes and just let it run. No need to power. Train's doing quite a good job of powering by itself going down the grade. So we'll just apply some brake get down to about 20, 15, 20 miles an hour and then I'll release the brake again. Grade is starting to change. Now it's starting to pick up again. I know it's rather hard to see in the tunnel at the moment. So we'll just continue on this We'll get up to about 30 miles of out, 30 miles an hour. We'll apply the brake again, keeping in mind that the speed limit is 35. We'll drop it down to about 15 again, or maybe even 10, and then we'll release the brakes and we'll let it run a bit, some, let it run some more. Quite a long tunnel this one. So we're nearly 10 miles an hour, so I'll release the brakes now. The brake will take some time to release, and then the speed will start to quick up, pick up quickly again. Are running air brakes on this train, not electrophumatic, so you don't have as much control of the brakes as you would in a more modern train. do the same again so we'll just put some brake on at 30 miles an hour and we'll bring the speed down again to about 10 miles an hour it's a rather steep downgrade you can imagine this is a rather long tunnel and you know, in the days of steam especially, this would have been a dangerous tunnel to work in. Okay, we'll release the brakes again. So 
So we're not actually using the power from the traction engines. We're just using the we're just using the grade at the moment, the downgrade and the brakes to control it. So back to 30. We'll pass some brake again. Down to about 10 miles an hour. And you can imagine what this would be like in the reverse direction. You'd be just applying power the whole time. So we'll go down to 10 again. So we'll release the brakes, they'll recharge. And that's the way you would have had to have done it in the era that is the routes modelled in 1968. You know, no mod cons like electric brakes. So, same again. Still at our 1 in 33 downgrade. So if I understand this, I always get this confused. If I go, I'm effect for every meter that I'm going along, I'm actually going 33 meters down, or the other way. I always get that confused. Like I know what it is in theory. I know it's a steep. I know it's steep. So we're ten and a half miles now from our destination. This was quite a long tunnel from, from memory reading the notes in the previous episode. Appreciate that you can't really see much, even though I've got the headlight on full at the moment. Uh, we'll apply the brakes again, just double check we have got the headlights on. Absolutely no need to power the, the the gradients doing the powering for us. You can imagine how much of a challenge this would have been, especially in the steam days. In a confined single line section, it's a very long tunnel. Steam trains are, whoops, steam trains are hard work as it is. Without adding a long single line tunnel going downhill. Going uphill wouldn't have been much fun either, just quietly. need to pay attention in this section because of the um, downhill grade and just quickly it picks up speed from 10 miles an hour to about 30 miles an hour which is when I put the brakes on again
And of course, also while you're in the tunnel, you don't really have any reference points for for your speed as well, which can make it feel that a little bit more difficult to um, judge the speed without looking at the speedo. That is, of course, assuming that the um, various engines would have even had speedos. We haven't gone over 35 in this tunnel, so that's been good. What we might do on this occasion, we might take it down to a... Um, we might take it down to a stop make a very brief stop and just let it roll. We'll do that. So now we'll let the brakes off. And I have not applied power at all. All I did was I stopped the train using the brakes and then I've just released them. There's no power being applied at all. So we'll let it get up to 30 miles an hour again and then we'll put the brakes back on. And of course, you've also got um, the effects of the um, the brakes on the wheels as well, which is another thing to think about. And you don't have unlimited air in the air brakes to play with either. So we'll let it get down to 10 again. We got down to about 7 then. Which is fine because we know that it will just increase speed again. Building this tunnel too, back in the day, would have, you know, about 100 years ago, um, would have been a major engineering feat. Um, as well at the time you know we're talking about the World War One sort of period and after that Coming to the end of the tunnel now, according to the uh, to the heads-up display down the bottom. So we're still on a 1 in 33 downgrade. Actually, at some point, um, probably at the end of these scenarios, if I remember, we should do this bit in the tunnel again, but going up with this train. So we're coming up to the Ralston River once we exit the tunnel.
Uh, we're just under eight miles now from our destination. A little bit slow going because of the um, constant downgrade. about half a mile from the end of the tunnel. Just under eight miles to go before we get to our destination. Having electric trains in this situation would have been so handy. I appreciate there's not a lot to see at the moment. Actually, we should go in the... I don't know if we can. Oh, here we go. This is inside... Inside the train. coming to the end. There we go, we're out of the tunnel. We're over the Ralston River now. We are still continuing our downhill run, 1 in 33 downgrade. We're c oh, we're coming up to a road overpass soon, just under a mile. So even though we're out of the tunnel now, we still need to um, break the same as if we were in the tunnel because the grade's still the same. So it seems like we're going quite slow at the moment, but we need to, considering the uh, downgrade that we're on. And with a train with electric brakes, it's quite a, quite a lot easier to brake on these downgrades. Uh, compared to a train with auto or air brakes which is what we're dealing with at the moment and I dare say we will be dealing with in the scenarios in coming episodes alright we'll let the brakes off now see the um, the road overpass that's coming up it 
There it is. Soon we're coming up to Goat Creek. Actually, we will change the view a little bit. Not exactly sure why the headlights are flash or the um, ditch lights are flashing like they are. Maybe that's what they do in New Zealand. We're six miles away now from our destination. The downgrade is starting to decrease. It's starting to um, be a little less steep. We're coming up to Otora. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not exactly sure. coming up the signal so we'll get it back in the cab we've got um we've got a top yellow coming up so our so we've got restricted signals coming up we're five and a half miles away now We'll just start to put our brakes on. Coming up to Goat Creek. So we may have to stop. Um, we may have to stop soon for signals. So, in my part of the world, a top yellow means that you'll be going through a turnout or a junction, if you want to call it a junction, a crossover, lots of different names for the same thing. But you would either get a top yellow, which indicates the turnout, and then the bottom signal would indicate the status of the... Um, of the following signal so you would only get a bottom yellow for the next signal is not at stop or a bottom red means the next signal is at stop you wouldn't get a bottom green like we did in that situation so we're going to apply our brakes now we've got a small green signal at the bottom of that main red signal So we need to pay attention now. Doesn't help that this is the first time that I've um, done this scenario. I haven't read any manuals, haven't watched any videos, etc. Still five miles away from our destination, so... We'll 
just put our brakes on again. Got some more signals coming up here. Our brakes are fully on. So we'll just take our time. Our tire up main platform. We're actually going to have to apply a bit of power to get to the signal. Now there are some green signals that I can see ahead but at the moment I'm not close enough and I don't know where I'm going so I don't know if they apply to us but it looks like we're going through this turnout are we? Yes we are. So now it's starting to become a little bit more obvious that uh, this is the main, main platform. Hang on. have a look outside here. So we've got a green signal, we're just going to have a look outside. Oh, It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we're 1,239 feet above sea level now. a bit of throttle now, we've got some green lights ahead of us which is good This wouldn't be 11 o'clock at night. No, it wouldn't be because we left in sunshine. And we left in the sun, so... So, four and a half miles to go now. Because we started at night. We started at nine o'clock in the morning. So unfortunately towards the end of the round you can't see a lot of it at, the, at this stage which is unfortunate. Hopefully during the uh, scenarios we'll get to actually start at this end in daylight so you can see um, see the scenery etc. Oops. We'll just put some brake on. About seven minutes remaining. I hope you have enjoyed these couple of episodes. Certainly a lot different from what other people who do train simulator videos do. But that's one thing that I've always tried to do if I've seen an unusual route um, some of them I have found and have featured and sometimes they haven't quite worked. But there's so much content out there. Uh, I can remember actually watching a stream from the developers of Train Sim World, which is the same developers who do Train Simulator Dovetail Games.
and somebody was mentioning that they went onto the store page and they said why is Train Sim World six hundred dollars? And they said no, Train Sim World is only six hundred dollars if you want to buy every single piece of content that's been released to this point for Train Sim World. You know, that figure for Train Simulator is in the thousands uh, for for this version of Train Simulator is in the thousands. If you were to buy, if you were to put all the downloadable content in your in your cart, it's a lot of money. It's in the thousands. I remember doing it once just to see how much it would cost. It was in the thousands. So the point that they were trying to make was that let's say it was six hundred dollars for all the all the content for Train Sim World doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy all six hundred dollars worth of content there are some pieces of content that i am not interested in in either train sim world or train simulator so i don't buy it or if i think that it's um overpriced for what it is i wait for it to go on sale or i you know and i look for it and i look for a discount The way that it was expressed on the stream, another good way of looking at it is when you go to the supermarket to buy your groceries um, you know, every week or every couple of weeks or every month, depending on how often you shop, you've got your things that you want to buy. And let's say that's $300. So you spend your $300 on what you've wanted to buy. You go home and you put them away and then you eat them when you eat them the whole stock of the whole supermarket say there might be five thousand sorry let's say hypothetically there's five million dollars worth of things in the supermarket it doesn't mean that you have to go and buy everything in the supermarket just because it's there you just buy what you want what you need you just you just buy that and and the stuff that you don't need the stuff that you don't want the stuff that you don't want to pay for you don't pay for it you don't buy it and that was the um and that was what was expressed with train simulator and and that's what i have to remember is that you know sometimes there's new routes that come out and i go oh yeah that'd be nice don't re really want to pay 56 dollars for it but with this route it's a it's a rare route it's the first public as far as I'm aware it's the first publicly available route for New Zealand in train simulator um, the train as I've mentioned before is a separate purchase not connected with this route and we've got a yellow coming up again So you don't have to buy all six hundred dollars or all six thousand dollars or whatever. You just buy the bits that you want. And if you're quite happy with, say, just the base version, you know that's sweet. So top yellow could mean in this context. I'm just guessing, not being from New Zealand or. You know, knowing anything about the system, I'm presuming that could be the next signal as it stop. We are 1.66 miles away from our destination, so that indeed could make some sense. So we are just going to uh, take our time. The uh, speed boards at this point are, are irrelevant to me because I... I, even though this is the first time I've driven the route and I do have the benefit of the map at the bottom of the screen um, I can't see a signal on there at the moment so I know that you know I've got time to break when I know how far the signal is away you know as far as I know at the moment there could be one more signal between me and the platform and then that's it and then I'm onto the platform and then scenario over. 
you know, I'm not going to go really open up at the throttle at this point because I know that the next signal is at stop. You know, we're still cruising, we're still doing about 25 miles an hour. Once the restricted signals start coming into play, the, the uh, speedboards go out the window. To a degree, of course. So we're coming up to the Deception River footbridge. And our next signal's just come into view. There's a um, 10 mile an hour uh, speed zone in conjunction with it, so we'll start to we'll start to break to bring ourselves down for that signal now that we can see it on the screen. It's still just under a mile away, but I do just want to bring the speed down a bit. We're basically flat now. So I'd rather just take my time a little bit um, approaching this signal and this speed zone change. So we're just over half a mile away now. You know, I know roughly how far a mile is, 1.6 k's, but, um, you know, I'm not used to operating in that unit of measurement. Miles, you know, I can understand, like, I can understand, oh, at the moment I'm doing 25 miles an hour, the speed limit's 45 miles an hour and I just drive accordingly but if I didn't have the map and the gauges in front of me I wouldn't okay the signals coming up I can see it from a distance so I'm bringing the speed down right now right down Going to release now. The signals first, and then just un after that is the um, 10 kilometer an hour. Sorry, 10 mile an hour speedboard. About a quarter of a mile now. but I do have to give the brakes time to apply and release. It can be very difficult in, in um, situations like this where it is dark uh, to exactly judge where the signal is. And now I can start to see multiple, uh, multiple singles. We are coming up to Aitken's Loop. And the, um, oh, there's a um, east loop and there's a west loop. So we'll just release the brakes. Uh, we come to a stop, so we need to apply some throttle. Looks like we've got the loop set. So 
So if we press tab, so it's telling us that we've got the signal set because otherwise it would come up with, you know, a, a pr so we do have the do have the signal. Slow speed into the... No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't see the other train there. Okay, we have to... Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing I can do about that now. No, 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 no. Oh, that's close. Oh, gee, that's close. We just pulled up in time. Now we need to go backwards. Because it was dark, I couldn't see the other train in the um, couldn't see the other train in the loop. So what we have to do? We have to go back. We've got permission to go back. Have to go behind our signal. So just because the loop's set, there's a good lesson for us. Just because the loop's set doesn't mean that the loop's not occupied. I could not see that train until I got, up, until I got a bit closer to it. You can see how it's barely visible now. And I only know it's there because I saw it. And we'll go back behind the signal. Now we need to go to the map. And we need to operate that junction, which we've done. The signal's changed. And we're good to go again. That was close. So because the um, points are no longer set, the alpha loop went out. We came so close to hitting that train. Wow, this has gone on long, longer than I thought. Oh, so we're coming up to... So that's a fairly decent sized train in the loop. So we're coming up to the main platform now. There it is. There's the platform, so we can stop here. And that is the end of our scenario. Not that you can really see it at this point. But that is our main station that we were going to, Aikens. We did that successfully. It took us a while to get there. It's about an hour 45 of recording time. Um, in this episode, about an hour in the previous one. Well done. You have reached the end. So now we go back to our main screen. And what I want to show you, I want to preview the scenario that we'll be doing on the next episode. We passed one signal at danger. We sped 25 times, which um, isn't bad considering. Oh, it was summer. I left... It was summer, it was 9am when I left and it was 11 something when I arrived and it was dark. Um, so if I go into career mode now. If I go into career mode and I select the route and you'll see how many routes I've got. Uh, where are we? 
Midland on New Zealand. Okay, so our first scenario, which we'll do, uh, we'll do next time on the next episode. We're taking charge of a picnic train heading to Arthur's Pass for the day. That's what we'll be starting at. It will be summer. Hopefully it'll be bright and daylight so we can actually see Arthur's Pass really well. I've been Simulated Eric. You've been wonderful. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now. See you next week.